In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a multicolor print like this on a machine without an AMS. Now, this specific process is suited for the Bamboo Lab machines, specifically the A1 or A1 Mini. If you're interested in seeing how it's done on some other machines, leave me a comment down below and we can explore that in a future video. Without further ado, let's get into seeing how this is done. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use Orca Slicer, but the processes should be the same in Bamboo Studio, although they may be called something slightly different. To start off, in my case, I'm just going to add a primitive. We're going to do a cube, and I'm going to resize it to some random width and length. Then we can add some text. Now I'm going to put in the text, no AMS. And as far as our depth, I'm going to set it to 0.4 millimeters. Because we're slicing at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, That'll mean we have four color changes to do to go from our initial color, which is going to be black. And then this color is going to be more of a gray. So if we go to objects tab, we've got our cube and our embossed text. The important thing to remember here is you want your text or whatever surface is going to be on the bottom to be second. So we've got our cube up top, our text on the bottom. I'm going to hit two on the keyboard to change the color to our second color of filament. And I'm going to click this and I'm going to click this tab up here called lay on face. And then we can click the top, which means it's going to flip it around and essentially print face down. Then we can move this into place. And you'll see right now it kind of looks a little ugly. If we hit slice plate, it's there, but it doesn't look great. To fix that, we click on our cube and our embossed text. Right click and hit assemble. Inside of Bamboo Studio, I believe this function is called merge, but the same process does the same thing. Now if we hit slice, that looks a little bit better. If yours is not quite lined up, you're going to have to click on your text or your image inside of the objects tab. If you just try to click this and move it around, the whole thing is one assembled piece, so that's not going to work. So we're going to click on our text, then we can go to move. And you'll see if you click the blue here, that'll drag this up and down. The goal here is to get it perfectly smooth on the bottom surface without going over. So if we click slice again, you'll see I got it right where it was. But let's say yours was sitting at negative 0.4. That's going to bury it inside of the surface so you won't be able to see it. So what I like to do is just, again, drag this down until it's protruding through there and dial back these settings until we get the right height. Now you can see I've just hit it. So we know that negative 0.62, in my case, is going to be where our bottom surface needs to sit. Now, one other thing I want to do is scale this up so we can click and drag, make it a little bit bigger. Now, you'll notice that it changed our height here. We don't want that. So change it back to 0.4. If we click slice plate and we go to the right hand side here and we scroll all the way down, you can see our first initial layer is going to start off with our second color, the gray, and then it will transition into the black. Our second layer it's going to start off with the black, and then it will transition into our gray again. Then if we go up to the third layer, you'll see it's going to then transition back to the black and cover that all up. So unless you need your text to go all the way through, this will work out perfect for you. Now, if we just click print plate, this will not stop to let us change the filament out. So what we need to do is go back into global, which you're probably going to see unless you've messed around with your settings before, is something like this. What you need to do is click advanced and that will activate all these extra settings for you. One thing I do wanna start off with changing though is our first layer line width. We're gonna change that to 0.4. What that's gonna do is create a thinner first layer for you and will help to fill in any gaps that may be there if your text is smaller. Then we can scroll down to walls and surfaces and we're gonna click only one wall on first layer. This will make sure your text looks as clean as possible. Just make sure your build plate is nice and clean because it may have a slightly harder time adhering to the build plate if you've got any grease or grime on there. The next thing I want to do is go into the multi-material tab and change our prime tower width and prime volume from the default 35. I like to go to 15, 15 and a brim width of two. What that's going to do is change your prime tower so you're not spending so much time waiting for the color change to occur. The most important part of this is under the printer tab. If we click edit and we go under multi-material, you should have single extruder multi-material selected. If it's not, if it looks like this, just click it 
and it will enable the manual filament change option. So we can click manual filament change and the process that actually makes everything work, we click on the machine G code tab and scroll all the way down to the pause G code. I'm gonna select that and you can either use your keyboard, command or control C to copy, or you can right click and hit copy. Then we're gonna scroll up to the change filament G code. If we click in there and hit command on Mac or control on Windows and then the A key at the same time, it'll select all. And then you can either command V to paste or you can right click and hit paste. So this is everything you need to change inside of the printer setup in order to make this work. You can click save and call it something like Bamboo Lab A1 Mini MFC for manual filament change. And it changes our bed type here to a smooth high temp plate. Make sure you change that back to a textured PEI if it does change your bed. Now, one thing that is super important is after you've done your slicing, after you've got everything set up, you're gonna wanna make sure that no AMS or your text for that matter is on the bottom. If you move it to the top and hit slice, you'll notice there's nothing there. This was a question that I got a lot in my last video on adding your logo to a box inside of your slicer. I'll link that in the video description as well as on screen right now if you haven't seen that. We need to make sure whatever object we're putting our text or our image on is on the top. And you can see just by changing that and having our text on the bottom layer, it is now on the bottom. So we're almost ready to go. One of the most important parts here is gonna be scrolling all the way down to our first layer and then scrolling all the way back. And we wanna see what color we're starting with. In this case, we're gonna start with gray and then it's gonna to transition to the black. So we know we're gonna go gray, black, gray, black, and then the black will continue on. And one last thing that I do wanna change before we head into loading our filament up is if your text is very small or the image you are trying to print is super small, I recommend changing to the Arachne wall generator. It just helps to get a better level of detail on smaller images. So you can see everything we've changed here. I'll go up into our machine G code. Once again, we've enabled single extruder multi-material and manual filament change. In the machine G code tab, we've gotten rid of all the text that was under the change filament G code and replaced it with the pause command. I've changed my prime volumes to 15, my prime width to 15, and then a smaller brim of around two millimeters. We've also changed our first layer line width from the default 0.5 down to 0.4. We've got a rack new wall generator on and only one wall on first layer. And I've got my two filaments loaded up here. The process would be the same if you wanted to do more than two colors. We could add another color here, add another image, but for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna use two colors. So we're gonna start off with gray and then transition to black. I'm gonna go get some gray filament loaded up in the A1 Mini and send it on down to the machine. And I'm gonna speed this process up in a time lapse, but I will come back whenever the machine is ready to do our first filament change. So the machine is paused. It's now prompting us. Printing was paused by the user. You can select resume to continue printing. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna press on the X and go to filament and unload. That'll heat up the nozzle and unload filament just as you would regularly load and unload your filament. And we're gonna load in our next color. In my case, that's gonna be black for the box and we can click load. Now what it's gonna do is tell us that our filament is ready to be completed, which it's not. Printing was paused by the user. You can select resume to continue printing. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna keep hitting retry until we see our color change occur. Once you see the filament start to change from your first color to your second color, you can hit filament extruded and continue, and that will finish up the color change process for you. Once it is finished purging, we can just hit resume printing. It will tell us load completed, and I like to go back so we can see our print progress and then it will start on that prime tower there. Once it's finished up with the prime tower, it'll go around and do our first black layer, then it will bump up to layer two and do our second layer of black before prompting us to change the color again.
Now we're being prompted once again to change our filament out so we can hit X filament and unload and swap back to our gray. And this process is the exact same as before. Gonna hit load and keep hitting retry until we start to see that color change from black to gray. Sometimes you might end up with the filament stuck to this, the extruder there. Come in with a pair of snips and get rid of it so it doesn't ruin our print. And then we can hit resume printing. Now this one is gonna happen really quick because it's not gonna do another layer of gray. When it's done doing this, it'll prompt us once again to change back to black, and that'll be our final filament change. All right, our print is all finished up. You can take a look at it. Looks pretty good. So that process really didn't take that long. Pretty quick and easy if you're following the steps. It was a little bit slower in the case of this video just because I was walking you through it and explaining it, but it only takes about 45 seconds to a minute to actually go through and change the filament change G-code and adjust your settings in the slicer to get a good quality looking print on a 3D printer without an AMS or multi-material system. Comes out pretty good. Now. The process of this is similar, but not quite the same on other machines. So this particular process with the modified G-code will only work on Bamboo Lab machines. If you wanna see how I do this on some other machines, leave me a comment down below. If you have any other questions about things you're unsure of, leave those down in the comments as well. One more thing I thought I would bring up just cause I have a feeling I'm gonna get questions down in the comments about it. The process is the same if you wanted to do more than two colors. You'll just need to go through the slicer settings like we did in the beginning to see which color we're starting with and see the order of which the colors are gonna print. So that way you know which order to swap your filament out in. Now it does get a little confusing when you're doing more than two colors at once, but as long as you follow what your slicer is telling you in terms of the order of the colors that it's gonna print, it should be a pretty straightforward process. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up to let other people know that this video was helpful to you. I will see you all in the next video, folks. Take care, and I hope you guys have an awesome day. See ya.